What's a twist? Last Night in Soho is about Ellie, a young woman with aspirations of becoming a fashion designer with a focus on 60s aesthetic. After traveling for college to London, Ellie moves out of her dorm and into a vacant third floor room of an old house. From the first night onward, Ellie has recurring dreams of Sandy. Sandy was a singer with her own aspirations back in the 1960s. Things are not as they seem though, with the dreams beginning to blend in real life, and Ellie seeing the ghosts of the past all around her as she tries to figure out what happened to Sandy and why the ghosts are haunting her in the present. First things first, the acting and story are fairly solid. The cast across the board all give good performances. Ellie is adorable, Sandy is understandable, and the roommate you just want to push into oncoming traffic. There is lots of color as well in the fashion of Guillermo del Toro, helping to emphasize mood scene to scene. And despite the numerous dream sequences, there is little in the way of CGI. Holding an almost 9 to 1 ratio, the special effects are often used to enhance visuals in a subtle way that doesn't really interfere with the story at hand. And while I am not a fan of the 1960s, with color and fashion uglier than sin, it is still Ellie's focus, so it doesn't really bother me. It's all pretty solid, and Last Night in Soho feels like you just went to a party and had a good time. Winding down, you head to your car and drive home with someone for a late night hurrah. Speeding down the highway, it promises to be a great finish until losing losing control of the car at 100 miles an hour and going up in flames like Paul Walker. Did you think I wouldn't notice the story breaking flaws? I mean, we all saw this with Dune. Well, I mean... And anybody who actually watched it, that is. Just because I love something dearly doesn't mean I'll blind myself with zealotry. Last Night in Soho is good until you hit that climax that almost ruins the entire film. I'll make a video about this going into meticulous detail to explain at a later time. Until then, in brief and with a spoiler warning, the conclusion does have a few things that fundamentally break the rules and thus much of the story. So skip to this timestamp if you don't want to spoil the ending for yourself. Now, besides John's face looking like Jim Carrey after a night of hard narcotics, the immediate observation is the hard flip from 90% practical to CGI. This is that my visuals crap that's been infecting filmmaking for a while now, and here it is no different. The absurd amount of CGI looks like Marvel shoveled it out after cracking whips harder than the Belmonts. Now, the serious issue is that Ellie was following the memory of Sandy and not her ghost the entire time, because Sandy in in fact, is the one who killed all the people who have been haunting Ellie. The fuck is this? The entire premise of this film is based on a lie. Ellie is shown to see ghosts, not memories, from the beginning of the film. So when the big reveal is that Sandy is the old woman Ellie is renting the room from, I just about shit a brick. Immediately, I was filled with more questions than a directionless teenager looking for the meaning in life. This makes no sense. Why would the ghosts not present themselves as the people they were? What purpose does that serve? Well, it's simple, actually. It is one big misdirection to prevent people from figuring out the twist too soon. It's like the director realized halfway through editing the film that it was a good twist with a crap reveal, so he scrambled to hide it and crossed his fingers people love Baby Driver enough to turn a blind eye. Well, the most of his career, really. Well, despite my favor of Edgar Wright, I, for one, am not so forgiving, and I didn't see Baby Driver because why bother when babies can't even drive cars anyways, dumbass? So ha! Chessmate. The issue here is weighing things fairly. If you know me, this goes without saying, but for those who don't, I put a lot of stock in the world of a film or series. Rules, internal consistency, etc, etc, so when an established rule is forgotten or broken, that tends to twist my balls like a back alley masseuse. Unlike Antlers, the story, music, even the twist, it's all solid up to and through most of the third act, but this climax and even that neat bow of an ending are almost what ruins it for me. I do like Last Night in Soho, as the sum of its parts are fine, but the aforementioned reasons are what hold it back to a pretty middling rating. So stay tuned for the long-form breakdown of Last Night in Soho in the near future. Also, please like, share, ring the bell for notifications, and if you want to watch more movie reviews, then subscribe and watch my review of the letdown that was Antlers over there, and I'll see you in the next video.